Okay, folks, I'm at home. I am quarantined in my room. Uh, I'm not going to get around anybody just in case I picked something up on the road. So I got my Bibles. I got my uh, uh, study Bibles and everything. We're in the book of Colossians. I wanted to go ahead and... Oh, sorry about the camera work. I do chapter one of Colossians today. It says, uh, I always pay attention, uh, especially in the epistles, who they are written to uh, and who are they written from. Uh, it's going to help you understand where you are and who they're talking to. So he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints, this is who he's writing to, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Again, they say that Colossae was four or five miles from Laodicea. Uh, I don't know that they've actually identified it or not. Uh, but uh, evidently, Paul didn't find the church. It was founded by somebody, uh, one of his disciples probably, is what I gathered, what I've read. Uh, you read different things, you get different opinions, so uh, take it with a grain of salt. Grace, uh, verse 2, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which we have to all the saints. For this is his greeting, you know. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Again, he's talking about his gospel. He calls it my gospel. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. <clears throat> the death, <clears throat> excuse me, the death, burial, and resurrection <clears throat> of our Lord Jesus Christ which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. So they've been spreading this gospel, his gospel. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, uh, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. Uh, verse 9, For this cause we also since the day we heard, a, heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and in spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing giving fruitful being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God <clears throat> so he's he's wanting them to be fruitful in every good work and increase in the knowledge of God. The way you increase is by the scriptures, folks, and by the Holy Spirit of God teaching you the scriptures. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Uh, would that we were more patient and long suffering of each other. Uh, with joyfulness, he says, 
a lot of times uh, uh, in my own life, it's hard for me to be patient and long-suffering, and especially with joyfulness, but you know, that's uh, that's showing my immaturity as a Christian. You need to, uh, as you grow, as you grow in the knowledge of God, you will be more patient and have more long-suffering towards others, especially Christians, which is sometimes a hard thing to do. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Hallelujah to God. Uh, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. He's talking about the kingdom of God there. The kingdom of God is within you. You have been delivered from the power of darkness and have translated or been taken from one place and put into another into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have and I want you to notice how many times you hear about the blood in this chapter too. Praise God for the blood of Jesus. In whom we we have redemption through his blood. Redemption to be redeemed <clears throat> folks is to be bought back. Bought back what a price. What was that price? The precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even the forgiveness of sins. Uh, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. That even means the de devils and uh, uh, the demons and the principalities and uh, powers and high places, these all were created by God for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now get this one, verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. So Jesus is the head of the body. We are the body of the Christ, and we are the church. The true born-again believers are the church, his body. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Remember, Jesus said, all power is given unto me. Uh, it's, the Father has given the power, all power, to Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross. Again, up here, verse 14, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Verse 20, having, uh, and having made peace through the the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself it's all about the blood there's a lot of, there's a big heresy going on today by a lot of big preachers that say the blood has nothing to do with it it was the death no it was the blood of the lord jesus christ you are you have he has made peace to God through the blood of his cross. He shed his blood. It's always about the blood. The life is in the blood. Our blood is corrupt. His blood was perfect. It took that sinless, perfect blood as a sacrifice on the cross for our sins. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, you would not be able to go to the Father. You would not be able to be saved. It's uh, very important to remember the blood of Jesus Christ. If they take the blood out of it, uh, they're taking salvation away from you. There's no other way 
through the blood. That's how you get there. All right. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, semicolon, by him, I say, uh, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. He has redeemed you. He has bought you. He has reconciled you through his blood, folks, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. We're unblameable and unreprovable in his sight because all God sees is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We're behind the door. Just like in uh, Exodus chapter 12, when I see the blood, hallelujah to the Lamb, I will pass over you. He sees the blood of his son. He passes over you. Amen. Uh, verse 23. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. This again is his gospel. First uh, Corinthians chapter 15, one through four, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Verse 24, uh, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. The church is the body of Christ. That's what I'm getting out of this. Okay, here we're getting into the mystery of the indwelling uh, Christ. Again, let me just take a real quick uh, look. Remember the, uh, the mysteries of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. A steward, somebody that takes care of your luggage, that takes care of the mysteries of God. And uh, seven of them that I got written here are uh, the incarnation of Christ, 1 Timothy 3.16. The indwelling Christ, this is where I'm at right now, Colossians 1, 27. The body of Christ, uh, Ephesians 5, 32, and Ephesians 3, 1 through 5. Uh, the blindness of Israel, Romans 11, 25. The incarnation of Satan, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. The rapture of the church, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 51. And Babylon the Great, uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. Uh, those, there's more than that, folks. But those are seven mysteries that we are to be stewards of. Mystery is something, well, you're going to find out right here in a minute. I won't even spoil it for you. <laughs> Whereof I am made minister according to the dispensation of God. Again, dispensations is a biblical word. Someone that des- denies dispensation is uh, denying the word of God. There are no dispensations. Well, I counted four of them. As a matter of fact, I'll give you them while I'm just at it. Uh, dispensations, 1 Corinthians uh, 9, 17, Ephesians 1, 10, Ephesians 3, 2, and Colossians 1, 25. Four times the word dispensation is uh, found. 
All right, uh, let, let me go back to verse 25. Uh, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you. Given to me. It was given to Paul. You got to get this, folks. Paul reveals mysteries that were hid in God. All right, let's. This is not me saying it. This is not Ruckman. This is not any. This is the King James Bible. Verse 26, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Nobody knew about it before Paul revealed these mysteries. Uh, almost all the mysteries are revealed to Paul. There are a few uh, revealed to uh, John the Apostle in Revelation. But they were hid in God. Uh, you got people that say, well, they were, uh, you know, it's always been the same since the beginning. No, there were things that were revealed to the church, to the body of Christ through Paul, who was taught in by Jesus Christ himself, uh, in Arabia, Galatians chapter 1. All right, verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the, this mystery. Now he's going to tell you what the mystery is. Among the Gentiles, which is, this is the mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The indwelling Christ, that's the mystery he's revealing right here in Colossians chapter 1. Very, very important uh, to understand this. So if you get these mysteries wrong, uh, you will. Uh, that's how people get off on the rapture. That's how people get off on uh, uh, their salvation by works or salvation by grace. They fail to study out the mysteries. I challenge you to do it for yourself. Do not take my word for it. Look into the mysteries of God which were hid in God. Ah, oh, let's just go back to it. All right, Ephesians chapter 3. I'm just going to go to one of them. Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, now let's just start at verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, prisoner of, Christ, of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, all right, the dispensation of the grace of God, that's where we're at right now. That's where the church is, is in the dispensation of the grace of God. you got to get that. We are not in the kingdom of heaven right now, okay, uh, which was offered to the Jews in the gospel, which is given to me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I foretold you in a for, uh, uh, few words. So, He's revealing another mystery, and that mystery is the dispensation of grace. The dispensation of grace, the uh, the mystery of the rapture of the church. Very important one. All right, verse 28, whom we preach warning every man, warning them, and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present Every man perfect in Christ Jesus. How are you perfect? Not by your works. It's not what he's talking about. You'd have to ignore the whole other, the rest of the chapel. Through his blood you are made perfect, okay? That's what he's talking about. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. All right. I want to show you something. I'm just going to give you something right off the cuff that's going to help you out. Matthew 24, most everybody, not most everybody, but people that do not get the mysteries right, do not get the dispensations right, will take Matthew 24 and apply that and say that is the rapture of the church. It is not. The rapture of the church 
was not revealed in Matthew. It was revealed to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, one of the very most important doctrinal uh, chapters of the Bible. You get your gospel there, and you're going to get the mystery of the rapture that was hid in God. Jesus wasn't talking about the rapture in Matthew 24. He was talking about his second coming. All this was hid in God. Okay, let's go. Uh, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, using the Bible to define itself, to let the King James Bible words define itself, a mystery is something that is hidden God to other ages. So he's going to show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trump, uh, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal uh, must put on immortality. Anyway, that's the rapture of the church. Then you go to First Thessalonians. I get, I, as you might can tell, I'm getting a little off my thing, but I'm aggravated with people that do not understand this is not a heavy doctrine. This is not hard to be understood, folks. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter four. Uh, I will start with verse sixteen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured out. The rapture's not found in the King James Bible, but caught up is. And it's just uh, uh, the word we use is rapture. Caught up together with him in the clouds. He's not hitting the earth yet. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. We're not going to go through the tribulation folks. We're going to get raptured out. Clear in the Bible. Clear teaching. All right. I went on. I rattled. I'm sorry. I rattled on about that. But it just aggravates me. And these are people that uh, that are teaching the Bible folks. That are teaching the word of God. And they've gone away from uh, Paul's teaching. They say, oh, the pre-tribulation rapture was not uh, taught until 1830. That is a crock. It was taught by the Apostle Paul in 61 AD, given to him directly from our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. My ranting's over. Uh, thank you for sitting through it. <laughs> uh, remember to read your Bibles. Pray without ceasing. Study these mysteries. Study the mysteries. There's seven of them listed here, seven of them given by Ruckman and them. Uh, and here they are again if you wanted to take a picture of them. First Timothy 3.16, Colossians 1.27, which we just read, Ephesians 5.32, Ephesians 3, 1 through 5.